Holy moly bass folks, look what I got. It's another gorgeous Ibanez bass and this one goes by the name of BTB845V. Welcome to another bass check. When Ibanez first released the BTB series, I thought of these instruments kind of like Ibanez's anti-series to the sound gears back then, uh, because the BTBs were massive, they were heavy, they were long instruments with a 35 inch scale, they had necks like baseball bats. Although I like that, I have to admit the modern BTBs are way more attractive and way more comfy. Uh, so, and that's what we have here. If you go to the Ibanez webpage, you'll see that Ibanez has three different lines of BTB instruments. It's the standard and the premium line, which kind of explains itself, right? And it's the base workshop line. They have three BTBs in the base workshop line. Two of them are uh, single cut models and the third one is this one. It's a five string, as you can see, but it's not tuned as you're used to. It has a high C string. So if you have a high C string, you want that high strings really to shine and really to be bright. In order to make it possible to play chords, to play melodies, and really get in the registers of the guitar players and the piano players, right? So for that reason, Ivan has brought down the scale to 33 inch on this very instrument. So that's one inch less than usual long scale and two inch less than usual BTB scale, right? Or as they say, the shorter it gets, the better it plays. Ouch! might be right in some cases. When I first unboxed this beauty, it reminded me of the PRS Gary Granger bass. And that's not a bad reference at all, right? This stunning Popla Burl top here, uh, that's ash in between and mahogany body wings. It's really, really beautiful. You have a ramp in between the pickups, also made from Poplar Burl, so that's gorgeous. It's just a stunner. It has a neck through construction, um, maple and walnut for the neck, Yatoba for the fretboard. We have 24 medium size stainless steel frets, we have a zero fret. We have abalone inlays in the fretboard. We have Bartolini pickups, Ibanez electronics with volume, balance, bass, middle, treble, and a three-way switch here to choose center frequencies for your mid control. So that's 250, 450, and 700 hertz uh, for this control right here. It's the Ibanez monorail bridge as we're used to on the higher class Ibanez basses. So this one has a ramp in between the pickups. Um, 
Gary Willis might be the first artist to have a ramp on his signature model made by Ibanez uh, years ago. He first did that. And I talked to Gary one at one point and he explained the ramp exactly. And um, you might think of the ramp only as a thumb rest thing. Of course you can rest your thumb on it, but that's not all there is. Um, mainly it uh, is to control your fingers not to dive too deeply into the strings like you could here. You really can go deep in here. You see that? You cannot right here because of the ramp, okay? So that's a very good thing to control volume, to control your technique, your right hand technique and um, that's, that's the reason behind the ramp, just to get into details on your right hand technique. This ramp, of course, is rounded at the top, as the fretboard is, but the pickups are not. So the ramp is like under the surface of the pickups right here and above it in the middle. So that gives you kind of a strange feel if you go over it like this if you want to change positions for different sounds or something on the bass. Um, that is something the R&D guys at Ibanez might want to think over. Um, of course I understand it's the radius from the fretboard and so it's the radius from the strings, but maybe there's a possibility to uh, even it out with the uh, pickups. It's a very special instrument at an affordable price, so that's just details. And to be honest, I'm not really complaining about that. It's just what I've found out looking at this beautiful, wonderful instrument. So again, this bass comes from the Bass Workshop series. And the Bass Workshop seems to be like a lab or something in their uh, factory in Japan. And the R&D guys just fool around and just build instruments, whatever they want to do. They build kind of like strange things. On the webpage you can read, uh, these instruments are not for everybody because they're so special. And yes, indeed, they're not for everybody. But that's one thing I really like about Ibanez. They push the boundaries of building instruments, building instruments in mass production. You might think this one comes from the um, Fujigen in Japan, but it does not. It comes from Indonesia. I guess it's the same factory where all or most of the other Ibanez instruments are built. Uh, but still, it's kind of special. Short scale, high C string. It plays really great, it plays fast, it plays well and uh, of course you can get into the areas where guitar players are, frequency wise. Nothing else, just frequency wise. And uh, like I said earlier, you really want that high string, that high C and maybe G string to shine and uh, yeah that's what they do, listen. shine and they're really bright and that's what I really dig about this instrument. When I push the highs all the way up it and push the mids at 700 Hertz, uh, the BTB is able to sound a little like a zitar.
So it's a great instrument. It's great for bass playing, of course. It's great for chords, it's great for tapping, for melodies, for everything. So this is the BTB, Ibanez BTB 845V from the Bass Workshop series. If you're interested in this bass or any other instrument from Ibanez, find the link in the description. If you have anything to comment about, any questions or anything, please let me know in the comments down here. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. See you next time. Bye.